Welcome to the Economica, and today's video is about the economy of South Korea. South Korea was founded as a country that relied on foreign aid in several areas. Today, the country is prosperous and technologically advanced, several giant companies were founded there, such as Samsung, Hyundai, and LG. But South Korea wasn't always a rich country. In 1910, Japan had annexed the Korean Peninsula, and remained in control of the region till the end of World War II, in 1945. With Japan's capitulation, the Korean Peninsula was divided into two parts, the North and the South. To the North, it was strongly influenced by the Soviet Union and China, to the South, it was strongly influenced by the United States. The newly created South Korea was invaded by North Korea which had the support of Russia and China, it started the Korean War in 1950, just five years after the countries were established. The war was extremely costly, with estimates that the war had about 3 million deaths. It was very unlikely that a country in such a critical situation would succeed. In 1963, a general, called Park Chung-hee, carried out a coup d'etat and attempted to reduce the dependency on foreign aid that South Korea had at that time. Park aspired to South Korea to be a market economy, with developmentalism inclinations. Then, as South Korea was not a country rich in natural resources, the government decided that they should focus on exporting industrialized goods. While the government tried to industrialize the country, they also invested heavily in education, promoted universal access to education, and improved its quality. They had five-year plans, which planned the progress of the economy, starting with increasing the productivity of workers, then the creation of light industries, such as textiles, and then moving on to more complex industries, such as the automobile industry. To boost its development, South Korea has attracted international investment. The Koreans approached Japan, which offered generous loans and access to the Japanese as skilled labor. Let's not forget that Japan had already invaded Korea and the two countries hated each other, but this time the countries were together against communism and had the same enemies in the region. The Koreans also sent soldiers to fight in the Vietnam War alongside the United States in return, the Americans and other allied countries helped Korea to develop economically. And since the American government had withdrawn its troops from South Korea, they thought it would be a good idea to develop their defense industry, so that they would be more independent of military aid from abroad. The South Korean government decided to focus on industries that produced steel, industrial machinery, ships, and cars. Park's government decided which industries it would promote, and who would control them, after that, giant conglomerates merged, known as cables. The most notorious are Samsung, LG, and Hyundai, which do not only manufacture electronics and cars. These companies also manufacture machines for industry, ships, also have operations in the financial sector, civil construction, and many other areas. These conglomerates also allowed an economy of scale. In addition, it helped the expansion to other countries. Time has passed and South Korea became a democracy, at the same time that the country has slowed the developmentalism of its economy and made it more liberal. Despite so many transformations, South Korea is still very dependent on these conglomerates. 44% of South Korea's GDP comes from the 10 largest Korean conglomerates. They also hamper the development of smaller businesses, damaging the climate of entrepreneurship. These large conglomerates also hinder job creation for young people, who compete fiercely for job opportunities in large companies, as small companies have little chance of surviving for a long time. It makes young Koreans leave family life and relationships in the background, which is impacting even the country's birth rates. Korean women have, on average, less than one child, which is one of the lowest birth rates in the world. According to the CIA, South Korea's birth rate is 0.9, which means that if this behavior continues, the Korean population will be extinct. This dilemma is genuinely a problem of a rich country that has a population that is extremely focused on producing. Korean conglomerates are controlled by families which ended up concentrating too much power in the hands of a few people and making these companies too big to fail. As this would be catastrophic for the country's economy. In addition, the Korean developmentalism system increases corruption. As it is almost impossible to compete with established companies without any government benefit. South Korea is a country with ancient traditions that quickly became rich. This means that it has problems of rich countries such as the rapid aging of the population, pollution, and the exhaustion of its natural resources. Other problems are related to its power structure, which favors a small group of people, in addition. 
The long working hours and the high competitiveness of Koreans in the labor market, which has been an obstacle to relationships are also serious problems. Finally, what happened to South Korea was an unusual economic development. Carried out by the private sector, but with the state supporting it, and with considerable participation from foreign countries. Another important part of South Korean development was the hatred of communism and its in constant nearby countries with atomic weapons, which are China, Russia, and North Korea. It forced the approached capitalist countries and develop its economy in a capitalist way. The lack of a good environment for entrepreneurs is also an obstruction to the country's development. But even though the future is challenging, South Korea has an extremely well-educated population, which will certainly adapt to the challenges of the future. I hope you enjoyed this video, if it was useful for you. Leave the like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.